Hi everyone, welcome back to Virich. Unfortunately, the studio is being worked on interiors because Anand is away. So, they have taken the time right now, the opportunity to do some much needed repair work in the studio. So, guess what? Welcome to the den. Welcome to the TCR. Beerich has not been here before. So, those of you who are in Beerich might be wondering, where is this? What is the signage here? Well, this is those of you who know about Tiffin Coffee Range and have been following me on Instagram and following me on the other channel on YouTube would know all about Tiffin Coffee Range. So, this is our dugout. This is where we sit down and we brood about investing in Indian stocks and look at Indian opportunities all in Tiffin Coffee Range. But fortunately for you, we're not going to be talking about Tiffin Coffee Range or Indian stocks today. We're going to be talking about what's happening in Google. Yesterday, we spoke about Meta and what Meta is going through. And uh, strangely, Google has found an ally in Meta, believe it or not. Not the way you think. It is very different because your enemy of your enemy is your friend, as they say. So, for Meta, the problem is they need NVIDIA, but NVIDIA pricing in such that it really hurts Meta and Meta right now is starved for cash. So, NVIDIA's enemy is definitely Meta's friend and Google also realizes that and both of them are working very hard together to try to somehow at least puncture a hole in NVIDIA's moat. When we are talking about NVIDIA's moat, we are not talking about the hardware. That is not where the real moat for NVIDIA is. It is in the CUDA ecosystem which they have managed to build and the PyTorch uh, compatibility which they are working on with the Torch TPU. I do not want to get into the technicalities of it because it is not a software channel, but basically what it is is NVIDIA created the NVIDIA chip, the GPU, they created CUDA which was the ecosystem, the NVIDIA's ecosystem, but for developers for the longest time, they have always used the CUDA ecosystem with something known as PyTorch, which is the basic uh, language which you use on top of CUDA. And this ecosystem has been used by developers for the longest time because NVIDIA encouraged use, uh, coders to come and join them on this trip, wonderful trip, where it was way back in the days of Bitcoin, when Bitcoin mining was going on and even before Bitcoin. Because NVIDIA way back was a company struggling and it needed people and allies to believe in them and to join them. And the best way to do is to allow people to enter in through the door and give them tools to work and that two tools almost for free. This worked very well for NVIDIA and NVIDIA grabbed, gathered the momentum and has gathered all the oxygen in the room and Google has realized this. Because what Google always thought was, this is not going to be anything big because we have been working on our own TPU and our own ecosystem and keeping it very internal all this time. Now, lo and behold, AI has come and the pressure is mounting and now Google has come to realize maybe this strategy is not the best strategy and that is what Google is pivoting now. Google is trying to cajole developers into coming into their ecosystem and saying it is targeting through the Torch TPU initiative. They are trying to target the PyTorch compatibility, basically trying to tell guys who are using NVIDIA and the NVIDIA ecosystem saying, hey, you can use our ecosystem. It is quite compatible. You know, you can do whatever you want to do there over here and we'll make it easy for you so that your workload is not too high. And this is what they're hoping will work. In the middle of all this, Meta is of course a strategic ally because it's not a customer convenience. Meta also wants a leverage against NVIDIA because of the lower inference cost it will give them. And Google also wants PyTorch legitimacy for TPUs. And this is a mutual defensive alliance which they are looking at. So, long story short, they are trying to somehow cajole developers who are the building blocks of NVIDIA's empire. It is not the hardware which has created NVIDIA into the behemoth it is. It is actually the lo and behold the poor small coders who have been using the NVIDIA ecosystem to create all this beautiful software and AI and language models that you have been seeing. So, by offering this upfront, Google is hoping to entice them into jumping. And if they are successful, then it becomes a different game altogether. Because then Google starts entering the space where NVIDIA is sitting and starts attacking them head on. 
but there are some blind spots to this and that's what I wanted to discuss with you. Even with PyTorch, you know, Torch TPU being completely compatible with uh, recreating the NVIDIA centric tools, debugging habits, institutional memories are made. For example, we are all using iPhone, we find it very hard to go to Android. If you are very used to working in Android, you find it very hard to go to iPhone, the ecosystem, IO system. Just the small things, the icons are the same maybe, but just the small things of, you know, pushing the menu this way, that way, opening the search bar that way, this way. Why? There was a lot of blowback Apple got because when iOS 26 came, they've rejigged the entire way we were using Safari and any of the tools and the glass interface which I had put. A lot of people who are used to the way iPhone ecosystem was, were very upset, especially the older generation. This is true for anyone, any human being. We are set in our patterns and we rather forego, you know, a bit of monetary gain for convenience because convenience always trumps when you're a human species. You don't want to think, you just want to do and you want to get it done, especially when it's work. So, this will be the biggest hurdle for Google to jump over. CUDA has been here for years, they've been using it for years. So, PyTorch to come along and, you know, jump over that barrier and convince programmers and developers to say, hey, you should be using us, we are as good. Hmm. It's not a technical thing, it's a cultural thing. I don't know if this cultural thing will actually bridge over. Second thing is performance parity is not guaranteed, right? Just because something is compatible doesn't mean it's the same speed. Anyone like Sadhu would test for this and vouch for this about lenses, you know, third party lenses on non-native cameras doesn't work. Meaning, if you use a Sigma lens on a Nikon body or a Canon body, it doesn't focus as sharp, it doesn't make it as snappy as usual, yeah, as the original, you know, brand uh, lens do. So, Sadhu was telling me before the video started, he's like, yeah, it's, you know, it is cheap using a Sigma lens or a Tamron lens on a you know, Nikon body or a Canon body is cheaper, but it just doesn't give you the same picture. That is the same problem for Google. It may be compatible, you know, for the people working in CUDA environment, PyTorch, but you know, it just doesn't mean compatibility means it's performance guaranteed. So, that is another thing. So, if PyTorch on TPUs is slower, less stable or harder to tune, this is going to stall adoption into PyTorch. Then we have our own Google's internal problem. Google internally has its own bias towards JAX, okay, which may be s slow in execution. For years of optimization around JAX and XLA, meaning uh, Python support, PyTorch, sorry, PyTorch support, uh, risks becoming second class citizens internally. So, even internally and within Google, there is a certain way of doing things, and suddenly you in, in search something new, PyTorch and you expect internal Google developers to move towards that, may not happen, you know, internally there might be resistance too, which is true within organization. And of course, we forgot, NVIDIA is not going to be standing still. How will NVIDIA respond? Well, very obviously, they will tighten CUDA PyTorch integration further and improve pricing flexibility because they already are at a point where they can definitely give deep discounts and bundling the software advantage, TPU alone cannot match. So, all this put together is going to be some con concern for all of this. But the flip of it is, it is going to offer immense opportunities for developers to have, you know, a more democratic ecosystem. We're going to see far more softwares coming out, LLMs coming out, AI stuff coming out, and it's going to give definitely NVIDIA a run for the money. And it's not a monopoly as it was once thought of way back. So, this is something interesting which I thought and it creates another revenue stream for Google in the long term. So, it's a long game, it's not a near short term revenue shock. They're trying to disrupt NVIDIA in the long run. And Google has been very effective in this. In the history, we have seen this before. In search engine, they did it. In browsers, they've done it. In operating systems, they've done it such as Android and YouTube. So, Google's list is endless. And uh, you know, NVIDIA has copied Google's playbook similar to this with CUDA. So, to see how Google is going to take this on is going to be some interesting times. So, wait and watch is what I would say. In the middle of all this, of course, we have Meta trying to find some scrap on the table, trying to get along with both of them at the same time, trying to make sure they both fight each other. So, no one is paying attention to him at least. Seems interesting. 
What are your thoughts on this? And I know today was a little technical the video. Even Sadhu was wondering what are you talking about, man? PyTorch, CUDA, Torch TPU, JAX, LAX, <laughs> not LAX, <laughs> XLA, all this. So anyway, I hope you got some information out of this, some food for thought. You know, this is what we always try to do. We try and throw you a bit of information to get you enticed and ap your appetite wet. So then you go do some deep reading and try to understand. A lot of you which, who are into IT and IT related IT I right, would definitely be able to talk about this better than I did. I am sure about that. So, don't get too critical. This is not my wheelhouse. You know, this is not my circle of competence, but I am trying to learn more and more about it because I am invested in Google. So, I am trying to understand this. And for non-native software geeks, I would suggest you do the same. Put your head into it and try and understand it and learn what all this is about. So, if you are investing in this company, Google, you do know what they are doing and try to understand how they are trying to improve their revenue streams. Thanks for being with me on Be Rich and welcome and thanks for joining us in our Tiffin Coffee Range studio and uh, see you again tomorrow probably back at the Be Rich regular studio. Good night.